when Professor Amit Jain had mentioned that anything on the learning process, whether this is applied. See now, it is it can be applied to the learning process even here. Say for example, under education, we can take up uh, uh, the challenge like improving the basic knowledge of mathematics uh, of students in, in rural schools. <clears throat> See here, if I take that, I can definitely understand the pain points of the people here. For example, mathematics. So now you can, uh, the audience, I request you to kindly apply your mind and then see how each of these challenges, what I'm showing here, can be tackled from understanding the pain points of the people who would be the stakeholders here. Start analyzing it. Maybe in a piece of paper, you can just start jotting down. Like for example, if it is to improve the basic knowledge of mathematics of rural students, then naturally students will be the main sufferers, correct? Then there are teachers, there are parents, there are school headmaster, and there's a society at large who are really interested in developing this, uh, you know, gap or bridging this gap. So how exactly we can do that? Or if we are working on the environment, how to decrease the usage of plastics by the people? Economy, I can work something from the economy, like encourage people on digital mode of transaction. How really I, you know, develop the mindset of the people and use digital mode of transaction, right? Then under health, walking support for a person with a cerebral palsy. Okay, how I can really design the support system for the person with that particular uh, disability. And again, design classroom delivery to improve the student's classroom participation. That's possible. I can work on attracting kids to the schools right improve the civic awareness amongst people on parking rules and it is actually say goodbye to tobacco for better health something we can uh, work on the uh, uh, visually impaired uh, students that is a braille board right and uh, taking students back to the schools who have lost interest in education and improving the environment of library of government schools. That means attracting more number of uh, people to come and participate or use the books for reading. Enhance the, enhance the communication skills of rural kids. Uh, the, the one, the list what I'm showing now, are all the projects which are undertaken by the students and given the solution using design thinking principles. They are not just the statements. They are all the problems which are solved, right? And the slow learners, teachers' biggest worry, how we can enhance the learning ability, improve the learning ability of the students. And uh, alcoholism and the individual health. Improve the sense of menstrual hygiene with the girl students. Increasing accessibility of study materials to underprivileged students. See, these are all the possible areas. There are many. I'm just sharing with you a few of uh, the projects which the students have undertaken. There are many like, you know, uh, developing a learning tool for matching alphabets with words for, you know, uh, specially abled kids. This is again a braille notice board, what I was talking about here. See, right side, what I have written is the design challenge, opportunity for design. This is how we must really write the problem statement with, with a positive note in the sense, how might we aid the blind students with the real time experience of braille usage. Okay, so uh, in fact, uh, the direct beneficiaries here were 70 students and the where it was applied is the government blind school. And Caesar gate walker for uh, students, right here, how might we create wide gate and uh, stability in their legs and simultaneously keep them motivated. So this is done at the Manovikas Institute of Rio. So it's a uh, walking stick for the blind, the visually impaired students with the, the uh, sensor in it. Filtration of water. And app for controlling mobile usage. Mobile usage is again a social challenge. Continuously using the mobile by the kids. 
that that is uh, actually a social challenge and uh, model builds for students to understand uh, the basic concepts physically able students for them it was built application for texting and walking see this is one uh, unique uh, app which was developed to uh, uh, you know put a restriction on uh, texting and walking while walking many a times we keep texting and then we encounter uh, the problems so how to work on this and there was a restriction put on uh, using this app wherein when you are walking it will not allow you to text so this is for changing the mindset of the woman towards their menstrual height health and hygiene okay so these are some of the possibilities what i'm showing now the list goes like this so it is a time for us to take a pause and then uh, understand what are the areas where students can really work so the students can work on education students and uh, can pick up the problems or challenges from health the health sector they can pick up the uh, issues from uh, the uh, governance isn't it they can even pick up from the uh, agriculture so all the areas there are plenty of gaps like this now the question comes why these gaps are formed why this you know, differences would come the uh, cons our understanding is very simple let us take an example of a traffic signal what the standard norm says the standard norm says that when there is a red light i must stop my vehicle where i should stop my vehicle i should stop it at the you know zebra crossing before that i must stop my vehicle and in fact stop my vehicle if i am taking right turn right side of the road if i am going to left left side of the road if you want to go straight center of the road right and then allow the pedestrians to cross when there is a green signal for them till they cross you don't move even if you get the green signal wait for the people if they have half crossed don't start honking and then make them to run no that is not the disciplined way of dealing with the, the people so this is what is a standard norm looks so nice so nice to hear it also and on papers it is so nicely been defined but what is our actual practice we all know i need not have to tell you so the gap between the standard to the actual is a challenge now you can apply it to all that what you practice in our life if you go on applying that this particular formula and then see that i'll find the areas where the intervention of the you know uh, engineer is required where i can really give the technological solution and using yes design thinking principles that's a basic principle that's how you know innovation and design thinking would go correct and different modules what has been uh, really defined through the syllabus is to know where all this design thinking is really being applied design thinking for it design innovation design thinking for the uh, like, um, mvp and the prototype all those are the various areas where where design thinking is being applied that's how uh, the syllabus is been framed but the core issue remains this we must really educate the students how to really capture the challenges from the environment every day the simple is this the actual practice to the standard practice but there is a gap i can i can give you more examples like this say so i have a this very good course learning process somebody asked me can i apply this design thinking in the learning process Suppose I have designed a very neat uh, course for the students, and I want the students should attend it regularly without missing any of the sessions. Done, and I, I make my expectations very clear. Learning objectives are defined, keeping OOB in the mind. The lesson plan is prepared. Everything is done. But to my surprise, the attendance is really weak. Students are not attending the classes regularly. So now the challenge for me is 
how to enhance the interest in the students or improve the interest in the students to attend the classes regularly because i want that unless and until they attend 100% the actual objectives will not be met that's that's fine so how how exactly i can do that i can apply design thinking principles so standard norm says that yes they should attend 100% but actually is they are not attend 100% the gap is the area where we really need to focus on like this i can apply this understanding to various activities and then make the students to come out with the best idea or project to work on okay so now how do i really understand this problem how do i uh, after you know discussing with i said no empathy we are coming to the end of the empathy phase right wherein i observe engage and immerse once i in, uh, immerse i i am going to get the clarity the details about uh, the uh, detailed insights from the various stakeholders who are part of it so where do i really document it which tool i really use best which is the best tool to really use it and then arrive at the meaningful you know pain points to work on correct so this is what is called empathy map it's a tool okay what this tool is all about this has got six quadrants okay when i'm talking to a person who is uh, you know really suffering with that problem okay he with whom i am going to interact i am going to interact keeping these six quadrants in my mind what is the first quadrant there the questions are pertaining to the immediate reaction of the sufferer about that particular challenge what i have identified right if i am talking about the civic sense what is that he wants to or she, she wants to say about that with immediate reaction okay i am coming to think there is a second quadrant on the right side <clears throat> the second quadrant i am going to capture what is it over the experience correct and in fact we are going to see this with an example how exactly this varies from or differs from one quadrant to the quadrant and the third quadrant left side does this will show the actions the user takes towards nullifying the effect of the quadrant on the right side it is user's emotional state and below we have one side pains which are the frustrations of the user another one is the gains benefits of the user so we have taken an example on wastage of food at hostels let us see this you know maybe i need not have to read out all that is available on the screen you all can look into it how the or the variation you can see in the <clears throat> kind of uh, insights we have captured all are different the first quadrants immediate reaction what it says lots of food wastage in the hostel mess i have noticed students taking too much of food in the plate and leaving it that means immediate uh, reaction on the, on the uh, issue we have uh, we have uh, you know really discussed on right go to that please so there is no specific quality taste uh, varies a lot but when it comes to things that means we are asking the person to little think and then answer okay there the answer you know uh, this thing would change food is sometimes it is sore and we leave it fearing ill health okay slowly we are going to the micro level part of the issue right from superficial to we are going deep into the understanding of the problem understanding their pain points see now how how it is unlayering i told you my know, empathy is unlayering so how we are really layer by layer we are trying to understand the issues then then they say food should be served on time and in a convenient manner students should take small quantities of food and then take the remaining if feeling incomplete yes but what he does immediately what he is really doing or he must have taken some action right i have bought it to the notice of the people i have informed the friends not to waste the food 
okay we have put up some awareness flyers so this is what he has already done or she has done but what they feel feel is important sad to see the food being wasted so it is lost to all and so much work will be invested on growing the this this is their concern feel is a concern but what are the pain points here correct their pain points is sickness due to consumption of poor quality food is their fear that's why they sometimes if the taste is not good they'll just leave it even though they know that wastage of food is not advisable poor self serving causes the waste correct lack of time management and planning to serve these are all the frustrations but gains are if there is a quality food is been and wastage is not there what would be the benefit if everything served on time if they get quality food the good thing you can observe your third point students will be able to go on time to the classes and there won't be waiting period or hungry hostlets to the class this is the gain pains are here so this one document which looks as this point of time very neat but the amount of energy we have invested amount of planning we have done before coming to this is huge now you can really appreciate the power of empathy power of getting connected to the people and identifying the stakeholders talking to them and coming out of this so this is the end of the empathy phase wherein this would be the outcome of the empathy phase right then once you are ready with your pain points now it's the time for us to take the clear look at it and understand what the problem is actually okay that's how we go into the second phase what is known as define phase okay so define phase is it is grounded in user needs and insights that means i'm going to take all the observations made through empathy and analyze it and try to get to the clarity that means when i say clarity it is setting the scope for of scope to my work i am going to define the scope to my work so why this is required why this is required is see i need to really look for what is the worth in doing this where i should really focus on the challenge i have identified correct i told you know like the, the systems thinking if you do it in isolation then the, 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 the whatever uh, you know the solution i give will not be impactful correct so i need to really look it from different angles and then analyze and then come out with what is called pov statement right so what is that pov statement let us really understand okay so let me take you through that it's a point of view statement what is that point of view statement okay when i'm trying to get clarity about the challenge i've identified i need to focus on three elements one is a user that is a sufferer what is the need of the sufferer and what is the insight okay once i insert these three elements my problem statement is ready the challenge statement is ready Okay, so let us see how exactly that works. Okay, so I have user, I have the requirement, I have the in insights. So how do I write my POE statement? Right? Let me see. Let me take you through an example. The challenge here is how to the population of street dogs challenge actually. So before arriving to this, I have gone through my observations engage to the you know empathetically into the observations made and then captured all the data and out of all the observations made i feel this is very crucial the challenge is like really these dogs are harming the people who would be you know moving around and their population need to be controlled so how to do this how to do this so first point who are the sufferers here correct we can start saying that pedestrians and expand to 
right children men and women motor bikers cars buses commercial vehicles right they are all part of this problem right and what is the need for the user safety from any bites no accidents to happen when dogs abruptly cross the road disposal of dead dogs or the treatment of wounded dogs that might get run over by the vehicles dogs bark in the night leading to dis disturbed sleep disturbed sleep right so this is the second part then third one is what are their insights there's a lot of uncovered see you can ask me from where do i have collected all this this is by interacting with the people interacting with the, when, when i go uh, empathetically trying to get engaged with the surroundings i collect all these things correct see here uh, in insights people have said like meat shops do not properly dispose the waste that's why they attract a lot of the street dogs some people feed the dog but do not take care this is even i have observed even i have observed that many of the people just to follow their their uh, show their concern towards uh, uh, stray animals they just come morning walking with a biscuit packet and they go on you know feeding the dogs and it becomes a routine for them and they start uh, you know getting accumulated on unwanted place and one find day if that person is not feeding them they start attacking the people okay this is again a gap i tell you the standard norm says if at all you want to feed you want to show concern to the uh, street animals then then uh, uh, make it a point to give it in front of your house or at one particular place uh, in a remote where you can just call them or attract them to the food but not in the public place where everybody is frequently moving this is what the people even show their level of uh, this thing so that would be again one more issue to work on to work on the behavior of the people attitude of the people correct so this is what is prepared in defined phase and with this what i do just see with this i prepare my point of view statement what my point of view statement says just read this pedestrians need safety from getting bit by street dogs and the vehicle users need clear roads to prevent dogs getting injured through clean streets special time food areas and controlling dog population through adoption if need to be and relocating so here see i am focusing on our pedestrians and the vehicle owners right so my immediate sufferers are pedestrians and then vehicle owners pedestrians are getting bit by the dogs and vehicle users when they really suddenly come to come uh, uh, in front of the vehicles or they, they may make the vehicle to you know especially two wheelers may have uh, 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 sort of severe injuries okay so this is what is the clarity about the challenge i say this is possible when i really do this understand i just go for this particular you know table prepared in defined phase once top i'll write my challenge which has been identified through empathy identify all the stakeholders their requirements and then insights so once i write this i'll be able to draw or take the clarity about the challenge i have identified so that the end of the uh, defined phase i have my design challenge ready and also i have my you know pov statement we call it as point of view statement which is going to set scope to my work who are my users and what is the scope of my work okay then i have one more example like old age men are prone to fall and need periodic assistance in view of any disabilities after creating so for this the scope here is old age people one generally above 17 see now my focus is on 70s above 70 need home care system that can assist in their day to day course for moving around in day and night that can be self managed and an easy call for help system as and when needed as and when needed okay like this we have one more example you can just read it on your own like 
KLE Tech, that is our university, needs to impart a design thinking course for first year students to tackle social challenges. See, it can, you can apply it to your organization. You are now uh, really you know, imparting the innovation and design thinking for first year students to tackle uh, the, uh, we may not be a social challenge, but challenges around them. So what is the POE statement says, KLE Tech first year students need to learn about design thinking process early in their education. See, early in their education is my, you know, challenge because the, the kind of preparation I need to do kind of, you know, really understand their uh, requirements it will be different. User centric problem and to impart skills with an approach that will help them to be sensitive to social challenges, prepare them for future semesters and wider career choices. So like this, see now, no, no, you, you must be able to appreciate the, the first part we are uh, trying to understand the, the pain points through proper uh, generalized way of uh, empathizing ourselves, putting ourselves in their shoes and then come out with the uh, you know, point of view statement. So now, I have design challenge, I have point of view statement. The tools I have used is empathy, empathy map, right? And then point of view uh, method. So next is ideate stage. This is quite interesting. If you take it from me, this is the most interesting phase after empathy. What, what should happen here is, here I'm going to generate as many possible and radical solutions to the problem as possible correct so why why this is essential we all know that there is no perfect solution for any of the problems we have ideal solutions we have so what is best suited it depends on the kind of brainstorming i'll do among my stakeholders and try to identify the possible best solution to the challenge i have identified Okay, so then what should happen here? What should happen? Let us take an example and then see. It's a very interesting process. I, I request all of you to kindly take a special interest in understanding this. See, the, 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 I have taken an example of students who are irregular to the school. I can apply it to my class also, and you can apply it to your class, where students are not regular to your class right so i told you the moment i observe this i need to interact with the students when i interacted with the students in the, in the main stakeholders so for my issue the stakeholders are students teachers headmaster and parents four category of stakeholders i have identified so when i talk to students what they have said why they are irregular to the school and do you think that when I ask the students, they just give the answer straight away like this? No, I need to really create that kind of environment for them. Go and orient them and tell them that what, what for we are here, how our intervention will really help them. Then they'll start opening up and then give the, you know, insights. So I see here the kind of insights they have given. First, do not like the way classes are conducted. You may not have thought of it. You might have, you know, uh, scheduled, supposing if we are talking about the maths class and you might have scheduled it uh, in, in the afternoon, after lunch at 1.30 to 2.30. That's a very bad timing for maths class. But still many people say that some, some practical classes, uh, if the problem solving is there, students will sit. But for maths, the best timing would be the first hour in the morning. When they are fresh, they should learn mathematics, right? Okay, then want to learn beyond classroom. They are not happy what has been taught in the class. So they want that beyond classroom they should learn. So they don't take interest in attending the classes. Expect the modern methods of teaching such as e-learning and smart classrooms are necessary. There is no one-on-one -on -one interaction. Do not, don't understand what teachers teach. Beautiful. I hope you all appreciate the kind of insights is really been captured and you all agree to it they are quite relevant and genuine right and teacher when when a group of teachers were subjected to interview they said the students are not showing interest in their studies you know how they, they the perception of change 
students say that they do not understand what teachers teach and to, uh, teachers say that they are not taking interest teaching methodology has to be changed they also uh, understand that to uh, present a generation need a different kind of a uh, delivery method so they need to change the teaching methodology syllabus set is very vast yes valid point parents need to boost their children to learn the things on time so they 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 even pointing towards the parents that they have some role to play here there may not be continuity when they agree that continuity is missing because of so many reasons so you see in india uh, the festival is one of the reason especially when into our uh, odd semesters when deepavali is there almost 8 to 10 days is really affected paralyzed so we lose lot of uh, subjects where continuity is essential and one among them is like this innovation in design thinking you take it from me i cannot miss any of my classes continuity is to be maintained for such classes if there is no continuity even teachers may feel sometimes like fish out of water is the condition right and continue with the teachers students are more in number can't concentrate on individuals so the strength of the class is more so it is it needs to be taken care of students get diverted by social media parents don't have time to look after their ch child parents are unaware of their child irregularity so headmaster on the other side says parents should take care of the students students get diverted by social media parents don't spend time with their child and on the other side parents say lack of pedagogical training to the teachers that, that's why even now we find that the way how they are teaching is not correct superficially into the profession see how the perception goes the students don't understand what teachers teach there are very few number of teaching faculty so see now the insights kind of insights i collected do you appreciate this the kind of efforts we have put in systematically they have really given you know in the form of insights which is quite meaningful what i'm going to do with this okay what i'm going to do is i am going to segregate them into some categories based on the insights what they are given from all the four category of people i just look into the similar ones similar ones and put them into some themes so based on the replies these people are given i i would now see from they are pointing towards technology so technology would be one theme many are talking about parenting can be one theme social media is responsible that is one theme student faculty interaction that is something has been talked so lack of skill teacher training part that's also one theme so five themes are now under each of the themes which insights can really come they are bottled they are transferred so under technology expect modern methods of teaching that is there teaching methodology has to be changed yes it is there want to learn beyond classroom yes parenting parents do not have sufficient time for children parents are unaware of their children irregularity yes these are all the insights pertaining to the theme there is no restriction that only i should have four uh, themes or five themes or two themes it depends on the kind of insights i have generated and uh, finding the similarity in the insights i can definitely put them into some you know themes uh, themes now see social media yes student faculty interaction yes lack of skill teachers is yes so just go through that these are all the you know themes and the corresponding insights that's fine so now let's move on to what i do next i would pick up i would pick up most relevant insights from the set of you know, insights or the themes correct so normally what is a rule we follow is we must we just pick up one insight from each of these technology which is most prevalent so when i do that i have 1 2 3 4 insights which are very crucial one i picked up from the technology 
which is quite relevant. One I picked up from parents, yes. One I picked up from student, one I picked up from the last, uh, that is pedagogical aspect. See now, this you can now relate it to the question what I asked or the system thinking what I showed the element, uh, elephant uh, story, correct? To address the issue of irregularity to the class, I need to address four challenges. Which are those challenges? One challenge is how might we bring modern teaching technique to the schools? Another one is how might we counsel parents on parent-children relationship? It's not easy, but still we need to do it. It's a challenge. That's why we call them as challenges. And third one is how might we we bring sorry bring change in the sleeping pattern of the students correct so it is sleeping pattern which is affecting them from uh, or restraining them from attending the classes so this is one more uh, you know very peculiar uh, challenge and then how might we train the trainers to get adopted to unique teaching techniques preparing them for the latest technological now if you club all four don't you feel that i am getting a systemic view wherein if I address all these four challenges the problem will automatically get reduced the severity of the problem would come down students will start attending the classes then what I should do how do I address these four things right let us go into that what I do now what I do is I take a white sheet drawing board I'm writing all the four challenges what I have identified Right, the one challenge is how to change the sleeping pattern, how to train the teachers, how do I get the modern teaching techniques, and how do I counsel the parents on parent children relationship. Then, what I do, I just start collecting all possible ideas to work on that. Just for sake of showing it, I have just made five five, but you can use the post-it, you know, sheets to just go on sticking it, go on sticking it with all the ideas. And this is to be done by the team of students who are, you know, part of that project. If you have made a five members team, all five should sit, right? And bring in all that possible under this word to address these issues. How might we counsel? You can, you can say, how might we counsel? I can say that we'll prepare on short video and then send it to the uh, parents. Somebody may say, we'll make a small documentary and then send them. Or somebody may say, we'll make a nice letter and then give it to them because we cannot go and tell them that is required. They may feel bad. So like this, there would be 101 you know, ideas which will be, you know, this is what we call it as storyboarding. It's a storyboard technique. Right? Now what I do, I just remove right, all the four challenges. What you are left with? You are just left with ideas. And on the top, you have your you know, design challenge. What is the design challenge? To improve the attendance of the students. And you have set of ideas. Just imagine the, the, the amount of efforts we have invested right from the beginning with the uh, observation till here. We have traveled a, a long journey, but what is we are ended up with? We have have a gamut of ideas to address the challenge. Then which one to pick up from this? Right now I have 20 ideas. Which one to pick up? Then I need to logically connect among these. Right? And pick up those ideas. And you know, uh, connect them properly and formulate one best, you know, I say the closed loop solution system and then take it for evaluation correct ideas are there so you need to evaluate evaluation has to happen among the members only i've got four ideas now 
So out of these four ideas, should we take all four or should we take only two? Let us see how best it is to be done. So I would like to again just take you through from the beginning from where we had started for our benefit. I'm just going to recapture all that has been done. See how we started. We started with the design challenge after empathy mapping. We just talked to the stakeholders, collected their insights. And when the insights are there, I'm just putting them into the teams and bringing all those similar insights at one place and then identifying most prevailing insights from each of the themes. And finally, I'm going to generate ideas to overcome those challenges, right? And taking out all the challenges left with only ideas, select the most prevailing or the supporting or most you know suited ideas to my challenge i'll just identify this is where i'm going to end my you know ideate but i need to now evaluate my ideas who should evaluate the ideas the members of the team and there are many methods many tools are available we will now here look into factors versus suitability correct so for that let us take up an example and then come back to the process. Okay, I have taken an example wherein the set of students had decided to go for a, a restaurant to celebrate something. There may be their happiness or their results or maybe the birthday they want to celebrate and they want to select the restaurant and they have in fact four choices, right? look into the table we'll come back to the process and then the description later first we'll just see how exactly this works so college canteen is one option for them suksagar is one option for them pizza hut is one option for them adiga upahar is one option for them. like like in, in uh, addressing the uh, absenteeism of the students we have come up with four solutions four ideas at the end out of all the four now i have to give the weightage and see which are the best one to tackle or prioritize first one to take which one to take and second which one to take third which one to take fourth or something like that. so i'm going to rate them rating okay so here to understand that we have taken an example of selection of the restaurant then what i do to select these four restaurants i need certain criteria on which this is to be really done it's three o'clock Okay, so the criteria what I have selected is cost, taste, time spent, choice of food. Right? So, on these four criteria, all the four, you know, options are evaluated, subjected to evaluation. What I do first? First, I give ranking to the criteria what I have selected. That means, in my opinion, which is most important for me. That is understand, please understand this is connected to my requirement. My requirement is supposing I, I am taking my friends to celebrate my birthday. Okay, in that case, my first priority would be taste. One to five scale. I am giving the five is most required, one is less required. So taste is my first priority. So I'm going to give five to taste. Time spent, I want to have more time so that there should be less rush or the restaurant should allow me to sit for long hours so time spent is the fourth one choice of food is equally important for me cost is okay for me even if it is high i don't mind it is less priority for me okay done now coming to these options i have four options college canteen suksagar pizza hut and adiga upahar i need to give the scores to these four options right so on the scale of one to five i'm going to give this when i compare criteria to college canteen cost is okay taste is okay time spent so college canteen it's our canteen i get ample uh, freedom so it's five choice of food there's no much choice so i'm giving one similarly for suksagar see cost is very less taste Sorry, cost as far as cost is concerned, it is not a good one to select. Taste 
excellent time spent moderate choice of food i have plenty sukhsagar similarly pizza hut and adiga the scores are given now when i multiply my ranking with the score i get my index weightage right so cost when i multiply with 2 into 3 6 5 into 3 15 4 into 5 20 4 into 1 4 so for college i am getting 55 points suksagar i am getting 59 pizza hut i am getting 53 adiga i am getting 61 so my first choice is 61 adiga second choice is suksagar third one is college canteen sorry uh, yeah college canteen and then pizza hut is my last option so this is how i evaluate my ideas correct this is what is exactly written here in the form of uh, procedure correct so once i do this my priority is set okay so first i need to really work on the first idea like supposing instead of four restaurants if i write my four ideas i'll know that first which idea is to be taken and depending upon the outcome of this should we, should i include the second one should i include the third one should i include the fourth one i'll definitely know to what extent i should include i'll also know and now my final blend blended solution model is ready correct once this is ready i am going to you know really go for prototyping okay here i would like to request everybody to take a pause for five minutes please go through all that has been discussed i hope uh, the faculty are here are taking some notes sir shall we uh, uh, ask one or two uh, audience to unmute and then speak sure sir Uh, participants, uh, those who want to ask questions, uh, just uh, put a request in the chat box. Hello, Shashi. Uh, I have unmuted you. You can ask the questions. So there are no, no, no queries. Hello. Hello. There are no queries. Sir. Hello. Uh, Suresh sir, I have unmuted you. Hello. Ha, ah, madam, you can ask. Hello, madam. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. Uh, this is Suresh Mane from Karwa. Yes. Uh, it is very nice hearing all the uh, learned speakers speaking on this important issue of design thinking. Mm -hmm. now, now the great situation faced by engineering education pan India is that uh, 
most of the institutions are struggling for lack of admissions for mm -hmm. the past three years. I agree. Mm -hmm. This is a very big uh, monumental uh, issue being faced by technical education at large. I just wanted to know whether uh, anything can be done uh, on this uh, uh, issue uh, using design technique. We can, we can. In fact, uh, see, there is, there is a, something which uh, we should really work at the institute level. See, the faculty who are going to engage these sessions for the first year students as far as innovation and design thinking is concerned, they need to really have a lot of experience in handling various types of projects, applying such approaches. I'm using the word such approach. Design thinking is one among them. There are many, many approaches. So they, they should get exposed to that. And then uh, it would be easy uh, cakewalk for them to take students through that uh, particular uh, journey. OK, it's not like my maths, physics. This is an open-ended uh, concept. Wherein PBL approach is to be brought in. And uh, we must take students to a higher level of cognitive. OK. So we are dealing with complex uh, problems. So you're right, you're right. The faculties can 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 definitely take the, the uh, such problems to work on. Then, but but since there is a national interest in that, correct, the kind of stakeholders who are involved in that need to be made available for interaction. But nothing is impossible. We can we can find out the solution for that, or at least know that where we should really touch upon in order to solve that. Ah, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, Shashtika, Madam, yes, yes. to... Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. I'm here, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah, tell me, tell me. Uh, sir, I would like to go back to the example that you had given uh, on stray dogs. Mm -hmm. Um, the problems, yeah, we stopped at the uh, point of view uh, level, so that would come under define, and then uh, I, I think that there are some. Uh, th I mean, at times uh, we have to address some uh, issues with rules and regulations. No? So then, how can we take it further um, from this point where you have stopped? Because this doesn't look like a concrete solution. Um, we know that there should be timings, and there should be. Um, I mean, we can promote adoption. But uh, in order to come with a, a solution, yeah. do we need rules and regulations to be implemented? And how would that be designed? Easily? Yeah, I, I really appreciate your, your point uh, point of concern. I, I'll tell you now. See, what I projected now is yes. actual interaction that has happened with the people. It's actual. Uh, yes, I understand. Uh, so in my case, people have not uh, talked about it. Yes. So, it's an unbiased uh, capture of insights, correct? The kind of stakeholders we interacted, right. they never talked about this. So the problem what I've identified may be of one particular locality where that may not be the necessity. Now you should be able to appreciate those things. See what you are now feeling that as a concern, it may not be the concern where we have you know, taken up that problem or the challenge. Correct. So the solution varies from community to community or situation to situation. Even though the problem looks alike, the challenge looks you know alike, but the solution would be different. Approach would be different. Right. So uh, it's, uh, you know, it, it totally depends on the kind of or the stakeholders whom I've identified who are really related with that particular challenge. Are, are going to make difference. Yes. Are going to make difference. That is what I But if there are no further uh, this thing, shall we continue? Yes, sir, we can continue. Sir. No more questions. So we can we can recapture once uh, what we discussed so far, because with this we will go to the another part of uh, the discussion that is. Uh, how this design thinking can be used for strategic uh, innovation. So this is uh, the recap. Uh, so when you are taking this particular uh, design thinking process as a workshop you conduct, these are the th you know eight uh, modules you should focus on. Ninth one would be the reflections by the students on the, on the uh, 
understanding they have and a small project which they pick up i told you know it, it may be from the campus itself uh, because when i say campus my system would have campus will have canteen it will have classrooms it will have you know seminar halls uh, there is a parking uh, space there is you know garden hostel uh, gymkhana there are so many things so they may find out uh, some gaps in that and then uh, they may work on that that is also a possibility and uh, uh, with the reflection you can close the uh, workshop mode and then now when we are trying to connect it to the you know strategic uh, innovation okay i am going to show you thing one second so now the, the question comes how i can really use this as a strategic tool right so when i really use this as a strategic tool how does it work right so now see see what is strategic innovation in that case why it is essential for the organization to really work on that see it is like a reinventing creating value for the company and its customer that means on continuous basis i should be able to reinvent the wheel and see that the, the progress i have made is never going to see the dip yes i can connect it to our own admission somebody you know really the professor asked me about the admission it's a valid point that i should never allow my admission to go down from time to time i must take the you know required uh, what i say challenges define challenges and then since we are using design thinking what is the approach i have in design thinking uh, family to address that i'll repeat this i'll repeat this see now I, the challenge for us may be to maintain the ad, uh, admission status of my university this is a challenge so from time to time i must really address this need and check reinvent my wheel and see that i take certain precautionary measures right risk based thinking approach i must apply certain you know uh, what i say the uh, uh, correction factors and then see that i grow right so the reasons for going in for that is one is i need to redesign my strategy to drive my business no doubt i would say it is a service organization even though i call it as a business because there is a business model working wherein whatever you know programs i run should be desirable required for the community required for the students if i sitting in hubli if i just open aeronautical uh, branch i don't have the lab support so uh, that would not run people will not take it so it is not desirable then it becomes non viable correct so all the three circles should be working when i really set my targets so it is for generating value for the company and also create competitive advantage so if i want to become number one or move in the ladder i must really you know grow to grow i need to have strategic directions so that is what is called strategic innovation correct so innovation is essential for the organization to adapt to the speed of technology change understand since there is a change that is happening if i were to move with that change the strategic innovation is essential so let us take in fact this uh, all these modules are taken from this particular book which is available on internet you can just download it and read it but it's a high end book so we cannot give it as a reference book to the students only i can extract from that book and then understand and convert it into the form which students can understand i tried that and i'll just show you how exactly it works see see why this you know strategic innovation is essential i told but what is the kind uh, kind of mindset i should have in order to start this journey see i should be able to understand the project what i am into the holistic way of looking at my project and understand it learn about it check and then execute correct so this is in fact both art and science strategic innovation is art and science so i need to able to 
answer certain challenges using design thinking approach available to address those challenges i show you what they are very interesting table please understand it very clearly in a nutshell i try to really address this see left side what i have are the challenges associated with the strategic innovation for the college we will uh, take the example of uh, educational institution and then discuss right side are the approaches available which are defined by the design thinking approach uh, sorry uh, design thinking principles right first thing what is that available to me is a growth i need to plan my growth this is a challenge so growth in what terms growth is connected to my what if i just connect it to the rupee value the 100 rupee what i have after few years it may be 90 time value of money so if i want to maintain the status quo of that i must earn 120 maybe so that that is equal to 100 rupees we all know this concept similarly in education institution if i want to maintain my status growth status and maintain the status and then further grow i need to go on adding new programs i should go on adding uh, the enhance the intake right address the needs of the art like a technological uh, requirements then plan my growth and there what this design thinking says is you use storytelling technique i'll tell you i'll tell you how you have uh, selected the college for your uh, children for their career many of us many of us uh, in the middle of our uh, this thing so middle of our uh, wherein our children have come to a stage where they are now in my mom in my case my son has already completed his graduation and doing his ms right so when i selected the, the institution for him i heard the story of that college i went to the website listened to the videos they have done and I, there is a story being built in the website you know that story has been listened to storytelling is a wonderful thing through which you can really reach out many people and help you for your growth correct so when when you select the college for uh, your son or you advise somebody to you you would definitely ask them to go through that uh, story for example if, if a company wants to sell its new product naturally a person who wants to buy this would say there, there are earlier products were very good it's a new one they have developed the earlier product is uh, like this like this like this so from where do you get that when you listen to them when they really release their stories through advertisements they would release their story through videos sometimes they would release it through a kind of a document which would tell you what that company was and then where they are and how they want to proceed so this is one way of addressing the growth aspects of business challenge using design thinking approach that is storytelling the second challenge is predictability Correct. Predictability is something wherein I am going to forecast, predict something, how it would really work. So here the design thinking says you can use strategic foresight. Strategic foresight is asking several questions like why, how, when, how many people really need it. See all that has been addressed through that kind of intervention we do with the stakeholders. Then understand and then predict what what exactly is the requirement tomorrow say for example again coming back to the educational institution what i do i will ask my students feedback i would take the feedback from my employers i take the feedback from my faculty what they look for right and i take the feedback from the academic council members who are paramount importance to me as far as the uh, giving direction to the, the, the university is concerned. They are the people who would stretch me left and right from the growth angle. Correct? So this strategic foresight is one more approach which will help me to go for the predictability. Then comes the change that is sensing. 
all the time i need to keep my antenna wide open for the incoming inputs from the people from the alumni from the students from the parents from the society right how they really react to the changing forms of the university and then then i keep eye on the growth of the other people doing at the many places because now we are into global village right we are into global village wherein i should be able to sense it well in advance and then do it so relevance value redefinition how relevant the present practices are see in our case once we become an university we clubbed computer science and information science made one one uh, single branch we clubbed uh, automobile we clubbed uh, you know industrial production into mechanical merged into mechanical and made one so like this the relevance need to be checked from time to time you believe it or not i have a practice of looking at the slides which i do it for my class for every class in a sense every batch that changes i would revisit all the slides which are done for its relevance correct but design thinking approach says value redefinition that is how it is so i need to really look for whether it is really getting the value which i was looking for through this intervention or not extreme competition challenge here it is experience design correct so what is the experience you have provided to your users correct so i really i, I love this word experience as far as design thinking is concerned so experience giving a, a new experience to the students faculty and other stakeholders in 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 in, in, in uh, getting what they are looking for from the university service provision is to be ascertained assessed and then look for the growth standardization that is humanization right human element is being bought into your design part so that i can standard here it is a standardization is my challenge but humanization is a human connect because we say user centric so i need to really bring human at the score of the uh, every intervention and then define creative culture is a prototyping that's what we already also discussed today also discussed and the mep is, should be added to here that early modeling that means early failure will definitely tell us that what is the amount of risk we can take further and then grow that is uh, challenges creative culture approaches i can go for prototyping and strategy and automation that's a business model design i must really take into consideration all the three circles desirability viability and technical feasibility and then arrive at this model this is exactly what is we need to tell the students otherwise it is very difficult for them to understand because they are in the first year i showed you some of the challenges which we need to address first year these concepts are very new to them right maybe if the subject is taught by non engineering faculty in any of the colleges even for them it is very difficult to understand the concepts of uh, some of these terminologies conceptually they would be difficult to understand right so now in that case what is strategic innovation it involves at uh, all the levels it gives us a bigger picture of where a team or organization need to go and then take action everybody should participate that is means everybody is part of this and what is the question you are going to answer few questions is where are we now where do we want to go how will we get there for that you have to address these challenges from time to time you need not have to address all the challenges at once you must go on one is complementing the other if you take actually if you take from the below it starts from uh, my business basic business model and what kind of a creative culture i have developed in my organization uh, have i given equal importance to the human element by understanding the requirements and have i developed the kind of experience to the human elements who are working for this organization and the value redefinition is happening from time to time and have, have i in the process of identifying or forecasting what is required in future and then develop a story out of it and tell it to the outside world this is what we are and go for the growth strategy and that's exactly what would happen in this case so this ends my entire 
discussion on those two models.